Hi, welcome to another Super Deluxe Edition unboxing video. Today we're going to look at a pair of box sets from Cat Stevens. Mona Bone Jackon from 1970 and T for the Tiller Man also from 1970. It's quite unusual to have two big box sets released at the same time from one artist but um, these both came out in 1970 so Cat Stevens released two albums in 1970. Uh, the first Mona Bone Jackon came out in April and T for the Tiller Man came out in November of that year. So these are both obviously 50th anniversary releases so uh, the record company felt like they should release them at the same time. The only other person I can think of that's released a couple of big box sets at the same time in recent years is Paul McCartney. He's done that a few times. He did it with Tug of War and Pipes of Peace. He did it with Red Rose Speedway and Wildlife and he also did it with McCartney 1 and McCartney 2. Now the early 70s was it was a great era for music and it was also an era where there was quite a few people that released two albums in one year. So Cat Stevens released two in 1970, David Bowie released two in 1971 in the UK at least with The Man Who Sold The World and Hunky Dory. In 1973 Paul McCartney released Red Rose Speedway and Band On The Run. And in 1972, Stevie Wonder released Music of My Mind and Talking Books. There's loads of uh, doublers. So it wasn't as, I mean, it seems extreme now for an artist to release two albums in a year, but it wasn't that unusual in the early 70s. Mona Bone Jackon is less well known than T for the Tiller Man. Although interestingly, Lady Darbonville, which is probably the best known song from this record, got to number eight in the charts. And I couldn't believe it. I was looking at the um, I was looking at the discography for Cat Stevens and T for the Tiller Man and you kind of think, yeah, you know, Wild World, Father and Son, you know, he must have had a couple of big sizable hits in the 70s, but neither of them were released as a single in the UK, which is pretty amazing. Um, Father and Son ended up on the B side of Peace Train, I think. But, you know, there was, there was no singles, which probably accounted for the fact that even though this was a successful album, it peaked at number 20 in the UK. It did a lot better than Mona Bone Jack on, even though this had a hit on it. So it's all quite bizarre. What happened was it's a bit like the way Hunky Dory got reappraised when Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars came out. Um, once T for the Tiller Man became quite well known, because it did have some big hits in America, that record. But once that became well known, then this, this album kind of got some more attention on it and got reappraised to a, a certain degree. So let's take a look at these box sets and see what's in them. Um, we've got a sticker here at the front that kind of lays it all out. CD1 is a remaster of the album. CD2 is a new mix of the album. CD3 is previously unreleased demos. And unlike... T for the Tiller Man, this has never really been reissued, this album. So this box set is all the more interesting because of that, because everything is kind of new. So yeah, so CD3 is demo, CD4 is live tracks. There's a Blu-ray with TV performances and promos. And there's a vinyl LP, there's a 12 inch, and there's a book, etc. These look like they're packaged similar to the Led Zeppelin box sets of 2014, whenever it was that they came out. So uh, let's take the wrapper off and have a look. That's the backing sheet from the uh, Mona Bone Jackon. So yeah, so these have that kind of linen sort of cloth sort of finish. And they've got, what they've got is the magnetic flaps at the side here. So that's the magnetic kind of flap that keeps everything Close. So it's you know it's very high quality. It has that feel to it. I mean these box sets aren't cheap, so you'd expect it to be high quality. I mean these are I think these are about 150 quid each, so sizable investment. But it you know it feels very very nice. The way that this is in set is not dissimilar to how Paul McCartney sometimes does it. So yeah, so let's lift off the lid and have a look. Yes, we've got a colour-coded ribbon here, a green ribbon to access the content. 
that's the empty box there. This is everything that's inside. So let's take a look through one by one. So this is obviously the album. You can see they've kind of reversed the colors on this because this vinyl record is the remix version of the album. You can only get that in the box set. They are reissuing the vinyl as part of this campaign, but um, the standalone vinyl reissue is the remaster, not the remix. So that's quite interesting. So the, the normal album cover is blue here and the, this bin is silver. So, you know, nice touch, I guess, to differentiate it. And got the original Island labels. This was issued, this album was issued on A&M in America, but Ireland in the UK. Die cut, sleeve, lyrics, etc. I haven't heard the remix yet, so I'll be interested to see what it sounds like. And you know, you kind of wonder why they chose to remix it. So that's the final LP. Now this is the second piece of vinyl in this box set. This is a really a kind of 12 inch EP type thing. And it's the Plumpton Jazz Blues and Pop Festival. Five or six songs here. I think one side of this might be etched, I seem to recall. Yeah, there you go. There's the etching. So there's quite a lot of tracks, including Father and Son, Lady Darbonville, Where Do the Children Play? And there's, as I say, there's five or six tracks, but they're all on one side. I guess this is pressed at 33 RPM. So this comes with this die cut inner sleeve. I mean, it's not poly lined, but at least it is an inner sleeve, I guess. That goes in like that. That's the second vinyl element from this box set. So this is the book that comes with it, hardcover, fairly thick book. That picture is the picture that's used on the back of the vinyl LP. Just as a reminder, this is the actual full color version of that photo. And this looks pretty good. I mean, there's an essay in here about the record, Basing Street, where the studios were. Chris Blackwell. So yeah, this is very much the kind of what you might expect from this sort of book. There's a lot to read, which is what I always like. You just don't want a book full of photos. There's some of the um, sleeve designs. That's the original sketch, felt pen sketch. It's got all the lyrics at the back. So very, very good. I do like this album. I really like this record, actually. I mean, T for the Tiller Man is brilliant, but maybe because it's just not so familiar, this album, it's give, you know, it gives you a bit more satisfaction. I don't know. So that's the book. I imagine when we look at T for the Tiller Man, it'll, it'll all be fairly similar the way this is laid out. So all the discs, they're not in the book. They're in a separate folio, which looks like this. So as I said earlier on, so you've got the CD. Yeah, so that, that's the 2020 remaster there. The second CD is the, is the 2020 mix. So that's the actual new mix. So they're the demos. CD four is live material. And then this is the Blu-ray. Bit like with the, um, I think it was the John Lennon set recently, but uh, the uh, Blu-ray's in a slip case and the other discs aren't. It seems to be a, reasonably common theme. I said in the John Lennon video, I think that, you know, the why does the Blu-ray need more protection? But I was told by someone afterwards that it does actually. So there you go. So this has a high res version of the remaster and the remix, but they're only stereo. There's no 5.1 mix, unfortunately. Let's just have a quick look at what's on the uh, demo. So some of the demos, for example, Trouble, Catman do, I want some sun, I think I see the light, Mona Bone Jack on, so it's lots of tracks from the record. The live disc is fairly full as well. I mean, none of these demos, I should add, none of these demos, none of those have been issued before. Unlike T for the Tillerman, which we'll look at in a minute, but some of those bonus tracks have been out before. Yeah, the Blu-ray features the high res 
2020 remaster and 2020 mix. It's in 2448, not 2496, but anyway, still high-ish res. And it also has the video for Lady Darbonville on the Blu-ray as well, which is good. So that's the actual content there. And then finally, one of these photographic wallet things. This is the sort of classic wallet full of bits that you sometimes get in box sets. So, Cat Stevens tour. I must admit, this is quite a nice sort of art print of the album cover design. That's very frameable, isn't it? Feels, it's kind of high quality, uncoated stock, this. So it feels, it's not sort of cheap, shiny paper. So that feels good. Um, what else have we got here? So that's a kind of mini poster for that jazz blues pop festival two-sided a little kind of lyric book sort of biog recreated from the era and a couple of glossy photos here very glossy actually so quite nice i mean the best thing i think is this that would look pretty cool I framed on on the wall seal that up again so there we have it so back in the box goes the wallet full of bits the folio with the discs in it this is the 100 page hardcover book which we looked at the etched 12 inch vinyl ep from the festival and finally the record the album the new 2020 mix of the album which looks good there sitting on top then all that closes up magnetically sealed and there's the Mona Bone Jackon Super Deluxe Edition box set very very nice I'm expecting similar things from T for the Tillerman so let's have a look at that now so here we go familiar album cover this is obviously exactly the same design the box you wouldn't expect that to be different on this one you get an extra CD, so the contents are fairly similar, but there's a bonus CD. So CD1 is the remaster, CD2 is the 2020 remix, CD3 is T for the Tillerman 2, which is the recent re-recording of the album. And then there's a fourth CD with demos, alternate versions, and then there's the Blu-ray, and then there's the two vinyl. So you actually get one extra CD over and above what's in Mona Bone Jackon. This is the backing sheet. We may as well talk a little bit about some of this bonus content. So the 2020 remaster was done at Abbey Road, like the other album, overseen by the original producer, who is Paul Samuel Smith, of course. Now, the 2020 remix was done from the original multi-track tapes, of course, because it has to be, really. Uh, T for the Tillerman 2 is the recent re-recording. There's 13 tracks on the demo disc. Actually, I forgot to say there's a live disc. There's actually five CDs on this one. And then there's the Blu-ray and the two final LPs. Anyway, let's take the shrink wrap off and have a look. So getting two box sets at the same time, in some ways it kind of spoils the surprise a little bit, doesn't it? Because we've uh, we've already been through Mona Bone Jack on, so we kind of know what to expect. But again, just an appreciation for how well presented these are. I really like these... Um, Kind of linen band there is a name for these box sets i can't remember what it's called but i get the feeling this is much more expensive than just doing a lift off lid box so that might account for the relatively high price of these sets as, as i say i think they're about 150 pounds each let's open the lid and have a look so the album should be sitting at the front here which it is similar to mona bone jack on they've re-jigged some of the colors on this record to differentiate it from the normal mix of the album because this is the 2020 remix again which is exclusive to the box set this is a gatefold so no um, printed inner with this which i imagine is just how it was originally there is a polyline sleeve though and the uh, island records labels now if you only know um, some of the big songs of this record I'll point out that the title track T for the Tillerman is the song at the end of The Office, the UK version of The Office. Ricky Gervais is a massive Cat Stevens fan. In fact, the last track on Mona Bone Jack On 
which is Lily White, is Ricky Gervais. I read somewhere he said that's his favourite song of all time. So obviously Wild World is very well known and Father and Son is, is the other one as well. But like I say, it's weird that there was no singles from this in the UK. But that looks good. That's the uh, final record. Same kind of situation. We get a bonus sort of 12 inch EP. This is live at the Troubadour from Los Angeles, 1970. A couple of tracks from here, Longer Boats and Into White, ended up on the bonus disc of the two CD deluxe edition that came out whenever it was, 2004, 2005, I think. There's seven tracks on here, so obviously it's more going on. So again, Polyline Sleeve. And this one isn't an etched disc. This is actually a two-sided record. It's probably just because there's more content and they just had to spread it out. In a way, that's good. I mean, it's less gimmicks, isn't it? I'm liking the cover of the book. With Mona Bone Jack on, we've got the photographic treatment here. This is a kind of debossed design. That's the shot from the gatefold of the album. Expecting very similar treatment here to the what we had before so you get the forward by Yusuf stroke Cat Stevens there's the original illustration it says here faded by 50 years of sunlight that's quite interesting isn't it yeah a bit of a talk about 1970 and what was going on some of the albums that are coming out Again, lots to read. This book looks really good. I'm looking forward to digging into all this. At the end, we'll get lyrics, just like uh, we did with the other book. It's really nicely designed, this book. Wild World, the classic. So same thickness, same binding, same everything. Just different treatment on the front cover. Well, that's the book for the T for the Tillerman box set. Quite cute, all the elements of the design being picked out. This is the folio with the discs in it. So as I say, one more CD in this set because of the T for the Tillerman 2. In some ways I'm a little bit surprised they put the second one in, given it's only just come out as a standalone album. But I suppose if they hadn't done that, you could argue, well, it doesn't tell the full story. So they're sort of damned if they do, damned if they don't. The Blu-ray again is in its own sleeve here. Let's do a bit of recapping. So first CD is the remaster. Second CD is the remix. Now the third CD is T for the Tillerman 2. The demo CD is quite a bit more on offer than the bonus disc on the old deluxe edition. So you do get more demos. There's a duet with Elton John called Honey Man. Um, what else have we got here? Yeah, there's a couple of songs that have never seen the light. Can This Be Love was one. It's So Good is the other. So it's quite a nice little hodgepodge of mixes, alternate versions, things that haven't seen the light of, light of day. There's lots of live material on the fifth CD. I mean, there's 20 tracks. So that's really quite significant, the amount of content on there. Same with the Blu-ray, actually. If you look at the Blu-ray here, there's 16 different videos on the Blu-ray, including BBC live recordings, live at KCET Studios in Los Angeles. And the Blu-ray is just like the other one, you get the new mix and you get the remaster in high res. So yeah, a lot going on. I really like this, it's very good. There's the full cup of tea. And then last but not least, we kind of know what's gonna be in here. I'm interested to see what the print looks like actually. And, and there isn't one. That's a bit of a shame. I was hoping we were gonna get a, a 12 by 12 inch print, which would go with the Mona Bone Jack on one, which I could frame and put on the wall. Not quite sure why they didn't do that, but there you go. You do get this miles from nowhere kind of art card. What else have we got here? This looks like a big poster. There's the um, Troubadour poster, lyric sheet. Another little art card there, sticker. So similar approach to the other one. As I say, I really would have liked a 12 by 12 inch art card to sort of match the style of the other one. 
problem with this kind of stuff is that what do you actually do with it? I mean, it's kind of quite cute when you first look at it, but really you just put it back in the envelope, put it in the box and never do anything with it ever again. At least with something that's frameable, you can actually put it on the wall if you so wish and actually get some actual use out of it, which is why I really like that art card with the cover images on it. Again, sort of attention to detail, the kind of color coded ribbon. It's not only do you get a ribbon, which you don't always get, they've color coded it depending on which box it goes in. So that's, that's good stuff. Let's go through and put everything back like we did before. So there's nothing on the front of this. You thought maybe they would have done printed or embossed something, foil blocked maybe. But that's the uh, wallet with the bits that go in it. Here's the uh, folio with all the discs very important part of the box set. Here's the 100 page hardcover book. Tells the story of the record. The Live at the Troubadour EP, which isn't etched like the other one. And then at the end here, we've got the, um, the actual album, the vinyl record, Tea for the Tillerman. So there we have it. So that's the Tea for the Tillerman Super Deluxe Edition box set, the 50th anniversary edition which along with Mona Bone Jack on is gonna keep any Cat Stevens fan pretty busy. So there we have both sets together. So that was the 50th anniversary super deluxe edition of Tea for the Tiller Man and Mona Bone Jack on. If you've enjoyed this unboxing video, why not subscribe to the super deluxe edition YouTube channel for more great physical music unboxed. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.